All right, it's that time to start actually solving physics problems. And at this point, you may not even know any physics, and that's perfectly fine, because I'm gonna show you a trick where you can solve a lot of physics problems and not even know a single thing about physics. Essentially, what I'm gonna be teaching you is how to guess your way to the right answer in physics. So I wanna show you how to guess your answers. Now, when I say guess, I don't literally mean just throw out a number. I'm gonna teach you a process that you can use on almost every single physics problem that you're gonna encounter. And if it doesn't help you completely solve it, it's gonna get you in the right direction. So as I said, guess doesn't actually mean just guess, it's an acronym. And it's a process that you're gonna follow using the letters in the word guess. So the first thing you're gonna do whenever you look at a physics problem is you're gonna take everything that's been given to you. You're gonna take all the variables, the velocities, the forces, the masses, and you're gonna make a list of things that the problem gives you. And secondly, you're gonna find out the unknown. What does the problem want you to actually solve? And you're going to take those two pieces of information, the givens and the one unknown, and you're going to use that to find the right equation to solve your answer. Now, once you have all the givens, you have the unknown, and you have the equation, then it's easy to solve the physics problems. You're just going to substitute your given numbers into the equation, and then finally, you simply just solve. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, before I completely just jump in and start solving a physics problem, I need to give you a little bit of information and they tell you what some variables mean in physics. So if you run across the letters VF with a V and a small little F, that means you have the final velocity. And if you run across V with a little zero, V naught is what we call it, that means you have the initial velocity. And if you run across a delta x, that means you have the change in position of the object. So change in position. Sometimes you'll see that as xf or x naught means the same thing. And if you come across the letter a, that means, well, acceleration. And t, probably the easiest one, t means time. So keep all that in mind, maybe write it down, keep it handy. And I'm gonna give you three different equations. So here are three of the kinematic equations that you will run into when you're doing physics. And you might look at that and think, okay, I'm already going cross-eyed, that's a little intimidating. Or you might look at it and say, oh, that doesn't look bad at all, that looks pretty easy. Either way, whichever category you come in, what I'm gonna show you is extremely handy. So let's solve a physics problem using the guess method and those three equations that I just had up here. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna slide back and forth and we'll look at it. So here is our question that says a car driving 30 meters per second accelerates at a rate of 1.5 meters per second squared until it reaches a velocity of 50 meters per second. How far did the car travel during this period of acceleration? Now you may have an idea of velocity and acceleration and you may know what those things mean or you may have no clue what they mean, it doesn't matter. When you read through this problem, you can use the guess method to solve for it. So I'm gonna write out the letters G, U, E, S, S. And the first G means given. What is everything that the problem gives you? Well, it gives me a velocity right here of 30 meters per second. It gives me an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. It gives me also another velocity of 50 meters per second. So that 30 meters per second, it says the car is driving 30 meters per second, and then later it reaches a velocity of 50 meters per second. So we know the initial velocity is 30 meters per second. And we also know the final velocity is 50 meters per second. And we know the acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared. What I just did there was I found all the givens in my question. So givens are done. Ready to move on to the next step. What is the unknown? The question is asking how far did the car travel during this period of acceleration? The car, the question is asking how far. That's a change in position, which is delta x. And I'm going to put a little question mark there because we don't know it. That's our unknown. Well, we just did the u found the unknown. Now we need to find an equation that has all these different variables in it. It needs to have a V naught, a VF, an acceleration, and a delta X. Okay, so let's go up to the equations we have up here. And hey, look, this one has a VF. That's one of the things that we need. This equation here has a V naught. That's another thing we need. This equation has an acceleration. That's something we need, but this equation requires time. We don't have time. And the question is not asking us to solve for time. So we can't use that equation. So that one's out. Let's go down to the next one. Delta X, change in position. We need that. That's our unknown, right? And then we have initial velocity. 
We need that, but once again, we run into time. Our question doesn't have time in it, it's not given to us, and it's not an unknown variable. So we can't use that. Even though it does have acceleration, it still has this other time in it. And also, this one is missing final velocity as well. So that is a no. So last but not least, this one has final velocity. That's something that we have. This has initial velocity. That's something else that we do have. This has acceleration. That's another thing that we have. And it has change in position, which is what we're looking for. So this is the equation we're going to use. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to write that equation in. F squared equals V naught squared plus 2a delta x. And there you have it. We just found our equation. Now the next step is to substitute our numbers from here into here. So let's see here. Final velocity was 50. So that's 50 meters per second. We're going to put that in there squared. Our initial velocity was 30 meters per second. So that's 30 meters per second. And we're going to square that number plus 2 multiplied by 1.5. And then we're just going to leave delta x there because that's our unknown variable. And then when you plug these numbers into your calculator, you're going to see 50 squared. I believe that's 2,500. And then 30 squared, that's 900 plus. Let's go ahead and multiply 2 times 1.5. That's 3 delta x. Let's subtract 900 from both sides. That means the 900 cancels out on the right side and we're left with 1,600 on the left side. We're gonna keep the three and the delta x. We're gonna carry those down. Then you divide both sides by three, cancels the three out on the right side. 1,600 divided by three. Plug that in your calculator. You're gonna get 533.3 equals delta x, your change in position. And there we got our answer, but we need to make sure we have our units in our answer. And I always like to write my answers where it has the variable I'm solving for on the left equals 533.3 and then position is measured in meters or a change in position is measured in meters so there you go your units would be meters and there you have it we just solved a physics problem and we don't even really know physics yet anyway if this was helpful to you and you want more help in future physics videos i got a lot more on my youtube channel so go and check it out